Hello, friends. I'm Pastor Pitts Evans. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. Let's get right to the Word of God. The author of Psalm 137 is unknown from most of the existing manuscripts. However, The Septuagint version, the Greek version of the Old Testament, has a really interesting prefix. It says, For David, a psalm of Jeremiah. Now, David and Jeremiah lived hundreds of years apart. And so that in itself, for David, and then a psalm of Jeremiah, as if Jeremiah had written it, would be a very strange prefix. But when you consider the content, it's even a little more baffling because Uh, It seems to have been written by someone who was in captivity uh, in Babylon and who was forced to do various things, and they recount their experience. Jeremiah never went down into Babylon. He endured the whole siege of Jerusalem from within Jerusalem, and then he was carried down into Egypt against his will. So this to call this a psalm of Jeremiah seems a, a bit of a reach, but traditionally the author is unknown. The occasion commemorates uh, the 70 years of Jewish captivity to Babylon. So whoever wrote this, this is what they're writing about. And it must have been composed sometime after the return from Babylon, which was around 536 B.C. That would make this one of the most recent psalms, with Moses having written at least one of the psalms around 14, 1500 B.C., This one is roughly a thousand years later at 536 B.C. or after 536 B.C. And so it has a lot of uh, painful reminders and references concerning the Babylonian captivity. Let's read now Psalm 137. By the rivers of Babylon we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. There on the poplars we hung our harps. For there our captors asked us for songs. Our tormentors demanded songs of joy. They said, Sing us one of the psalms of Zion. How can we sing the songs of the Lord while we're in a foreign land? If I forget you, Jerusalem, may my right hand forget its skill. May my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth if I do not remember you. If I do not consider Jerusalem my highest joy... Remember, Lord, what the Edomites did on the day that Jerusalem fell. Tear it down, they cried. Tear it down to its foundations. Daughter Babylon, doomed to destruction. Happy is the one who repays you according to what you have done to us. Happy is the one who seizes your infants and dashes them against the rocks. So a very um, difficult and painful Psalm. The wording is is painful to read and to consider. But the people of Israel, just to recount what happened, you may recall, uh, the Jewish people were unfaithful to Yahweh. And as a result, the Lord lifted his hand of protection around 600 B.C. And so in 586 B.C., the Babylonians destroyed utterly the city of Jerusalem and the tabernacle of Solomon. They raised all of the buildings, and they took uh, most of the citizens of Israel into captivity in Babylon. And so this is uh, the Jewish people remembering the 70 years of captivity. So it hits my remarks at the beginning. This must have been written after the captivity. But the first verse, By the rivers of Babylon we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. The rivers of Babylon are not identified here, but two of the the big ones are the Tigris and the Euphrates. Those are Babylonian rivers. And so the sitting by the rivers and weeping and remembering Zion, there's a tradition among the Jews, uh, if there's no synagogue, to go and worship by a river or living water. Moving water is called living water. In the New Testament, there's a couple of episodes where uh, the worshipers of Jesus were out worshiping beside rivers because there was no formal place of worship. So it's appropriate that the refugees, when they were in Babylon, would go and worship beside the rivers of Babylon. And what were they doing? They were weeping and they were remembering their homeland. For 70 years, they remembered Zion. Verse 2, there on the poplars we hung our harps. 
For there our captors asked us to sing. Our tormentors demanded songs of joy. They said, sing us one of the songs of Zion. And then the response was, how can we sing the songs of the Lord while we're in a foreign land? In other words, you want us to be joyful. You want us to produce the the songs musically that we sang when we were happy. We can't do it. So they hung up their instruments. And there's, a, there's an interesting story I want to tell you that's aside from this. I do a lot of work personally in the nation of Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone was a country that uh, faced horrible civil war in the 90s. And the signature atrocity was they would come into a town or a village, the rebels would come into a town or a village, they would line up all the citizens and they would have them draw lots as to which body part would be cut off. And so it could be a hand, an arm, a breast, or a head, a leg, a foot, whatever. And in some cases, they just dismembered uh, people in the community. On one occasion, a man that I know today who's a pastor in Sierra Leone at this moment, when he was a boy, they came into his town and they made him dance while they dismembered his entire family. In other words, under threat of death to himself, as a young boy, he was forced to endure the murder of his family before his eyes. And not only that, he was forced to dance in celebration as their tormentors killed them. Now, this um, this song recounting the tears from Babylon and the days of oppression in Babylon, it brings that story to mind. Now, the young man that I'm referring to, by the grace of God, came through that situation and ultimately found the Lord and became a pastor. He's in charge of many churches today, and he's kind of a spiritual son to me. But perhaps there are those who have uh, done things to you against your wishes. Friends, with the Lord's help, there's nothing you can't overcome. But continuing with our psalm, verse 5, the psalmist says, If I forget you, Jerusalem, may my right hand forget its skill. May my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth if I do not remember you, if I do not consider Jerusalem my highest joy. And so they're, they're remembering that um, uh, they kept in focus the land of their birth, the holy land, while they were in captivity. Then they call on God to punish Edom. Edom was a next-door neighbor uh, to Israel that apparently celebrated their destruction at the hands of the Babylonians. Verse 7 Remember, Lord, what the Edomites did on the day Jerusalem fell. Tear it down, they cried. Tear it down to its foundations. So they're asking the Lord to to look back on that and to respond to the Edomites appropriately. Then there's a, a very painful wish prayer for Babylon to suffer as Israel and the people of Israel had suffered. And so I'm going to conclude with this and then we'll have a few remarks and we'll pray. Daughter of Babylon, doomed to destruction, happy is the one who repays you according to what you have done to us. Happy is the one who seizes your infants and dashes them against the rocks. And that last verse, verse 9, what a horrific image that must have been seared into the collective consciousness of Israel from the siege and the fall of Jerusalem to the hands of the Babylonians. But Lord, we recognize that the people around the world, perhaps those that are even listening to this now, many have suffered from situations that were out of their control. They were mistreated, in some cases held captive. In some places, um, they dealt with war and oppression and hardship, again, outside of their own control. Lord, we pray for healing and for grace for those who have suffered. Lord, we pray for forgiveness of their captors. May their captors repent and come to their right minds. Lord, um, for the families of those who have suffered, we pray for grace and healing. Lord, we honor you, and we recognize that the Jewish people, in many ways uniquely in the earth, have suffered at the hands of many nations. May our countries be those who bless them. May we be those who pray for them. And Lord, like the psalmist said, if we forget Jerusalem, may our right hand forget its skill. Lord, may we never forget to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. In Jesus' name, amen.
Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.